Ever since I installed the Xbox HD Plus mod into my original Xbox, I wanted to use an official wireless Xbox One controller with it. The Xbox One controller is one of my favorites. I've been using this Xbox Elite controller for years and I absolutely love it. So ideally, I'd like to use an Xbox One or Xbox Series controller with my original Xbox. OGX360 is an open source project that allows you to use a bunch of different USB controllers with an original Xbox. You could even use Bluetooth enabled wireless controllers if you're using the 8-bit Doe wireless adapter. I've got this Xbox Series controller that uses Bluetooth, so that's the controller that I'd like to use in my original Xbox. However, the original OGX360 project required soldering small surface mount components to a printed circuit board. It's not super difficult soldering, but it may be difficult for some beginners. Fortunately, there's another simpler version of the OGX360 that uses a pre-assembled Teensy development board. It also requires soldering, but it only requires soldering wires from the Teensy to a USB port. Let's just jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to put together the Teensy version of the OGX360 adapter. Let's take a look at the parts we're going to need to put together our OGX360 adapter. First, we're going to need this Teensy 4.1. We're going to need a female USB jack. We're going to need an original Xbox controller to micro USB adapter thing. We're going to need this 3D printed case I found from Madmon. And we're going to use some wire to connect the USB port to the Teensy. I'm going to use this 26 gauge silicone wire. It comes in a bunch of different colors that we can use to kind of color code the USB wires. We'll also need some heat shrink tube. Make sure that the diameter of the heat shrink tube is just a little bit bigger than the thickness of the wire that you're trying to use. Now in a nutshell, we're going to have to solder this USB port here onto the Teensy onto these pads down here. If you bought the same female USB ports that I did, you'll notice that the pins on the end here are kind of off to the right side there. Since this USB port kind of lays on top of the Teensy board inside of the case here, that means I'm gonna have to be careful with which direction this USB port is facing. My only option is this way around because if I try to flip it over like this, you'll see that this wiring is gonna butt up against the SD card. So now if we hold it so that the pins are facing the top here and we spin it around so that we can see the front of the port, the order of these pins from left to right is gonna be ground, data positive, data negative, and five volts. I'm gonna color match the wiring on the other side so that they match with the pins on the front of the USB port here. So from the back, that's going to be five volts, data negative, data positive, and ground. If you have a different scenario where maybe the USB port that you bought has these pins on the other side, you might have to wire this the opposite of how I'll have to wire my USB. USB port. You'll notice that there's actually a fifth tab here. That's the grounding tab for the shield, and that'll be another ground as well. Next, we're gonna actually solder some wires onto this USB port. I've gone ahead and cut about four or five inches of these pieces of silicone wire. I have two pieces of black and one each of red, green, and blue. Now I'm going to strip and tin each of these wires. and I can tin each of the tabs on the USB port, as well as the tab for the shielding on the side. Now I can solder these wires onto this USB port. I might as well start with the sheath on the side here. I'm gonna use one of my black wires. Your tab might look a little bit different from mine, but it all does the same thing. Next is five volts, which I'm gonna use the red wire for. Next is negative data, which I'm going to use this blue wire for. Next is positive data, which I'm going to use the green wire for. And last is ground, which I'm going to use the other black wire for. Okay, our wiring is looking good, but I'm gonna add some heat shrink to the ends here so that the wiring doesn't short out against this SD card cover here. I'm gonna cut up some little pieces of heat shrink. And I can just kinda of shove them down on the end there and make sure that they're covering the solder joint. Mine are a little bit uneven, but that's all right. And I'm gonna use my hot air rework station to shrink the tubing. That looks pretty good. Our heat shrink is nice and tight on there. Our next step is to actually solder this USB port onto the vias of the TNC. I'm gonna line up my wires here and I'm gonna cut them all about the same length. That's maybe three inches or so. Go ahead and cut it off. 
Now let's strip and tin the wires on this side. All right, now we can actually solder these wires into the vias here, but I wanna make sure that our USB port is kind of facing up. And then I wanna double make sure that I'm putting the right pin from the USB port here into the right via on the Teensy. If you look at the back of the Teensy here, you can actually see the pinouts to make sure that you're lining up the right wire from the USB port to the right hole on the Teensy board. And this is how mine turned out. Yours might have the wires going a different direction to the USB port. Like I said, you have to make sure that you wire your wires up specifically for your USB port. Now we can go ahead and assemble the adapter. I'm gonna put the micro USB port in first and then lay the teensy down. And then we're going to wrap this USB port around and put it in the slot up here. Push it down. Hey, I think that looks pretty good. Now, before I put the lid on, we still need to flash the firmware on our TNC as well as test it. So I'm gonna put this aside for now. Let's go over to the computer and flash the firmware on our TNC. Next, we're gonna have to compile and flash the OGX360 firmware onto our TNC. If we go to the OGX360 T4 GitHub and we scroll to the bottom here, there are instructions for using the command line or using Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. You're also gonna need the platform.io extension, which is under preferences, extensions. You can just search for it up here. It looks like I already have it installed and it shows up as an icon over here on the side. We're gonna to need to clone the GitHub repository in Visual Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this line here from the GitHub. And then if we go to terminal, new terminal, I'm gonna change my directory to a GitHub folder. And then I'm gonna paste that line here and hit enter. And after a while, the GitHub repository is gonna be all copied to our hard drive. After the repository is downloaded, go ahead and hit file and open folder. And we're gonna to navigate to the GitHub repository that we just downloaded. And we're gonna open this folder. After the folder is open, we'll have a whole bunch of new buttons at the bottom here. I'm gonna hit the check mark, which is platform IO build. After we're done compiling the firmware, go ahead and plug in your Teensy, and then press the button by the SD card slot on the Teensy. You should see a little tiny LED blink a few times. Then we're gonna click the Platform IO Upload button, this little arrow. This little window is gonna pop up that shows that it's flashing the firmware. I got a little rebooting message, and it looks like everything is flashed. With the firmware flashed to our OGX 360, let's go ahead and plug it into our Xbox, and we'll turn the Xbox on. Here I've got my 8 USB adapter version 2 hooked up to the OGX360. In order to pair the controller, all you have to do is press the sync button on the 8 adapter and press the sync button on the Xbox controller. After a couple of seconds, the controller is going to vibrate, letting you know that it's paired. You may have to change the USB adapter into X input mode by holding down view and plus on the D-pad of the Xbox controller. I don't have a good way of testing controller latency, but I used this adapter for quite a while and I didn't notice any. I'm sure there is a small amount of latency because this is a Bluetooth controller going into a Bluetooth adapter, but it's definitely worth it to be able to finally use a modern Xbox controller on my original Xbox. If this video helped you assemble an OGX360 adapter, give this video a like and get subscribed so you don't miss more of my modding tutorial videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.